sectors such as WhatsApp and Facebook in terms of networking, they have not exactly made any investment towards the GSMA network that they do use. So we call them over the top because they're going over the top of our networks, um, but then they're not regulated, they're not paying taxes in the same way that the mobile industry is. And so um, what we're trying to, to really uh, look at in that respect is how might governments manage that relationship with over the top players, especially since um, citizens here in Samoa are becoming increasingly concerned about the threat in terms of cultural issues that are arising from use of over the top player services. The participants are made up of members from the government ministries, chamber of commerce, the IT society, and the telecommunication service providers in the country, and Rhonda expressed the value of their feedback on the basis of the issues raised during this week's gathering. Uh, the thing that I would say has been most encouraging is that they see value in implementing some of the solutions that we've talked about um, in their particular ministries. And I think also they're, they've told me that they're building an understanding of how they need to, to do better at policy making and regulation so that they can unlock some of these opportunities. So for example, uh, in, some, in discussions with some of the people from the regulator right now, they're working on how can Samoa extend uh, access to the internet for all you're presently working towards having the undersea uh, broadband connection come to Samoa, which is going to be a huge first step. And so what we're hoping from the industry side of things is that the mobile network operators, Blue Sky and Digicel, also have opportunities to collaborate with many of the people here to create mobile-based solutions that will benefit the um, Samoans. The protection of children from these networks will also be under the spotlight. Um, so I don't know specifically about the Samoan context, but I know that um, the minister yesterday mentioned that a lot of citizens are becoming concerned about this. I mean, the, the challenge is it's not, uh, in the U.S. we have these problems, but we also have quite a significant task force that's set up um, to address this. So uh, if there's an issue with um, child sexual abuse content that's being shared online, we have systems in place for reporting, uh, for, for removing this content, and then also providing support to victims. And because nowadays, uh, if someone in Samoa is sharing any kind of content like this or producing it, um, there, from what I've understood, there's not a defined system in place. And so right now, um, that's what we're going to be working on with the government. And so we just had confirmation from the police department that they will also be there because everyone sees it as a priority. And even if it's not happening now, I think what steps we may be taking are, are those to prevent um, some significant problem from happening because maybe it's not very common in the Pacific, but we have seen in another uh, a number of countries in Asia um, that this is quite a huge problem. And so child online protection is something that everyone should be concerned about and should be involved in addressing even if it's not yet a, an issue. This program will end in the next two days. However, it is hoped that the matters discussed will not end here. Instead, the stakeholders can take the necessary steps to ensure that the safety of the children can be made paramount while also reaping the benefits of the advancements that, that mobile and technology has to offer. Be we see me, TV Free News. Cabinet has approved.